When I heard um, that Dr. MacArthur had died, the, th the, thing, the thing that first came to my mind, being as how the last several years I've been teaching freshman theology was something from scripture, and it was the, the cry of, of Elisha when he saw the prophet Elijah, his master, going up to heaven in a whirlwind. He said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And the reason I thought that of that was because I thought his understanding of his relationship, of who Elijah was, um, was this. Elijah was, first of all, to Elisha, his spiritual father. Elijah had called him from following the plow and had made of him a servant of God. At his, he had, he had asked that when Elijah was gone, that he might inherit a double portion of his spirit. Now the double portion of his spirit signifies that he was asking to be his heir, because the heir always received a double portion of his father's property in Israel. And Elijah had said, if you see me going up. He, said that, he told him that that was a very difficult thing to ask, but that he would receive it if he saw Elijah going up. And so at that moment, when he uttered that cry, he had seen Elijah going up. And so he knew that Elijah was his father. And he identified him as his father, as his spiritual father. And why did he say that he was the chariots of Israel and its horsemen? Because he had been the great leader and defender of the faithful, of the, of the 7,000 men who had, not, who had not bent the knee to ball or kissed it. He had defended Israel against Ahab and against Jezebel and against the 500 prophets of Baal. So he was, in addition to being Elisha's father, he was the spiritual leader of Israel. And so Elisha identified him well. And that's why I, th I thought of that text when I heard that our friend had gone home to God. Because he was to me and to many of you I know, a spiritual father. I first met him when I was a junior in college, some, about 52 years ago. He was teaching me Aristotle's Ethics, Junior Philosophy at St. Mary's College. And <laughs> like most of you, I, I, I was captivated by his enormous energy and his enormous enthusiasm. And I, I want to try to identify here, but I, he, he was more alive than most people. And his, he loved, he loved the truth. He was a lover of wisdom. And that, but there are many lovers of wisdom, but he had the gift, he had been given the gift that made him a great teacher, that when he loved something, you loved it too if you were in the same room. <laughs> and that, it was that, 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 gift that made, that changed my life because in that, in that class I, I became 
a lover of the things that he loved and necessarily of him. And he did that, he's done that, he did that to so many of us um, and changed our lives for the better. So he certainly was a guide to me in years after that in many ways, morally as well as intellectually. And, and, it, but, and an inspiration. But the thing that was most, that most significant to me was that, that the, what, what, what happened in that junior philosophy class to my soul. He was also the leader of this people, though it might have been better to have compared him to Moses than to Elijah. Because he made this people. He and Bill Grimm. <laughs> because he made this people, he brought into existence Thomas Aquinas College. Not single-handedly, I understand that, I'm sure. But most of those of us who, who were also part of that were brought into that by his vision and by his enthusiasm and by his love. So, and that, that founding has made all of our lives so much better and has um, built this community, um, but I think it's important to remember why he found, why, why Ron himself um, thought the founding of this college was, it was necessary. And so I wanted to say just some, a, a bit about that. Um, he, is, as Tom said, he, he, he believed that ideas have consequences. That's the title of a book by Richard Weaver that's worth reading. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it lays out, the, that book lays out the theory that I know Ron believed firmly. And that, but that is basically that the disintegration of Western civilization is intellectual in its roots. It's not that we don't all have original sin, that's a, that's a cause too, but that's, that's a common, that's, that's, <laughs> that runs through the whole human race. But the abandonment of the, of the intellectual tradition of the West, and particularly by its greatest defender, the Catholic Church, that, was going, was, that, that has, had gone on in modern times, had come to permeate the, the uh, Catholic intellectual establishment of America, even, even before the Land of Lakes statement, the, the thing that made the Land of Lakes statement possible, um, that was what he, he believed that we, if we were going to turn things around, we had to turn around the intellectual life. And he told me once something I think that's stayed with me. I, 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 know, I think I know where he uh, learned it himself because I, I think he told me, but it, it stuck with me always. And that is that an an intellectual tradition has to be a living tradition. It doesn't. It can't just exist in the books. It has to be. There has to be a community, an intellectual community that has a common, a common body uh, of doctrine at its core, and that that was why there had to be established. A, a true Catholic intellectual community, and that was why why he wanted to found the college. He knew perfectly well that there would only be a small, this college would never educate more than a few people. And he knew that it was pretentious, it would be pretentious to think that you knew how to turn around civilization. <laughs> but he, but he thought that 
to do the right kind of thing and to spring the intellectual tradition of the church forward into a living community was the, what was absolutely essential to whatever else Providence wanted to do with it. <laughs> and so that was, that was the, the, the core motivation. And I, I was convinced very early by him about that. Um, and it was, it was, it was, that was the task. Um, and it was, it was a task that seemed at the time pretty difficult. I remember when it, someone first proposed to Ron that he should start, the exact words were, well then why don't you start your own college? <laughs> and he said, you can't start a college. <laughs> And, uh, but and it took, a, it took, it took a, a good deal of conversation after that, but he finally decided you could, and um, off we went. So uh, I, I, I just, I want to say that, that um, we will, we will all miss our dear friend. Um, he was, a, completely unique person, as everyone is, but a really unusual person. <laughs> and, and, uh, and he's done so much for all of us in our lives that we, uh, and, and there's nothing we can give back to him now. Uh, we can pray for the, except that we can pray for the repose of his soul. And I know he'd want me to ask you to do that, so I will. Thank you. <laughs>